Yeah, good morning everyone of you. So uh, we were seeing this unit one qualities of measurement. So in this one so far we have covered all the contents. Part one we have divided the three different parts in this one. Part one entirely we have covered uh, what is measurement, what is the meaning of measurement, then what are the instruments, then functions of the instruments and elements of an instrument. Then we have seen the characteristics of instrument instruments like static and dynamic characteristics. Then part two was about the expansion thermometers, uh, mercury expansion thermometer, bimetallic thermometer and pressure spring thermometer. And together with pressure spring thermometer, we have seen pneumatic balance pressure spring thermometer also. That was somewhat advanced compared to this uh, pressure spring thermometers. Then common temperature scales we have seen, five different common temperature scales which were used in the, uh, according to the industries. Then mercury in glass thermometer we have discussed in detail. Then bimetallic thermometer also we have discussed in detail. And pressure spring thermometer we have discussed its construction, working principle, uses in everything. Then pneumatic balance pressure thermometer, what are its advantages and disadvantages, how the construction will be involved, we have seen. Then various common effects. As in yesterday's class, we have seen common sources of errors in the field system thermometers. So what are the five different errors which may be induced during the operation as well as the installation of that particular uh, instrument, we have seen. Then various characteristics of uh, the thermometers, mercury, gas or vapor filled. What are the effects? What are their sensitivity? Everything we have discussed in detail. And coming to part three, yesterday we have covered so far this thermoelectric temperature measurement and some industrial thermocouples. So thermoelectric measurement, there are three types of effect. One is the Seebach effect, then Peltier effect and then uh, Thomson effect. Based on these three effects only, the thermocouple will be operating. Then loss of uh, thermo thermoelectric circuit, so which are composed using homogeneous conductor. There are three loss. Using this combination of loss only, we can uh, input. Okay, we can join the thermocouple wires with a another lead wires. Okay, that is law of homogeneous circuit and law of intermediate metals and law of uh, intermediate temperatures. So all these laws when combined, so we can uh, properly operate, properly construct the junctions of this thermocouple circuit. So now the last topic in this unit is industrial thermocouples. So what are these industrial thermocouples? Whatever we have seen, this all are the simple circuits. So inside circuit, all this is a simple circuit. How the thermocouple can be made? But what about the industrial thermocouple? How they will be looking? What is the difference between them and others? So for example, the first figure shown here is called as an industrial thermocouple. So what are the desirable properties of this one? So industrial thermocouple by definition, it is same. Whenever two dissimilar wires are joined together and there is a temperature difference between the two terminals of this thermocouple, then there will be a generation of EMF. So that EMF is directly proportional to the temperature of the measuring junction. So that that will be the common principle, but how the construction is different. So the desirable properties of any type of thermocouple or a general characteristics we can say that is a relatively large thermal EMF. Usually that will be around 10 to 50 milli, uh, millivolts will be there. So in the millivolts, this EMF will be measured. So thermocouple should have a relatively large thermal EMF for a given temperature range in order to use in a simple and rugged measuring instrument for indication of temperature. So for indi to indicate a temperature, there should be an relatively large thermal EMF. So for whatever the large thermal EMF according to the temperature, okay, according to the range of that particular uh, thermocouple, it needs to be generated accordingly this large thermal EMF. Usually that will be in between 10 to 15, 50, 50, 50 millivolts. So the EMF of most of the thermocouples will be around 10 to 50 millivolts for the desired temperature range and thermocouple needs to be withstand. So the abuse of long continuous okay, industrial service. So the whatever the construction material is there, we have to choose in such a way that it should be rugged okay? because the thermocouples uh, are once installed, they, they will be installing there. So it will, uh, which, which, it will have to withstand for a long period of time. Okay, that is nothing but one type of abuse on the thermocouple. So thermocouple needs to withstand this um, abuse of long and continuous operation. So usually the continuous operation, this thermocouples will be preferred. So the precision of calibration. Next point is the precision of calibration. So what is this one? So in the thermocouples, uh, they must be capable of calibrating to a standard EMF temperature relationship and should maintain the uh, uh, maintain that calibration without any drift for over a long period of time. 
why this should be calibration without any calibration no instrument can be constructed or no instrument can be operated uh, when you see the weigh balance also in the laboratory chemistry laboratory or something like that so weigh balance for every uh, every time when we notice some errors in that one we will be checking with a standard weights so that is called as a uh, calibration so whether the instrument is pro functioning properly or not we can able to judge that one based on the calibration only so in thermocouple um, thermocouple they must be capable of calibration to a standard emf temperature relationship and should maintain these values this calibration without any drift for a long period of time then only that thermocouple is accepted for the industrial use the next one is a resistance to corrosion and oxidation so usually uh, the environment which is there in the industry will be corrosive corrosive environment or the oxygen levels are very high okay depending on the availability of the oxygen what type of construction material we have to use otherwise the oxidative corrosion or a dry corrosion can be happening there uh, so uh, re the resistance it should offer a resistance to corrosion so this industrial thermocouple should offer a resistance to corrosion and oxidation and also the contamination in order to have a long life of thermocouple because if the this corrosion is happening repeatedly we have to replace the thermocouple with a new thermocouple every time so that will increase the cost of your measurement every time so we need to avoid the corrosion and oxidation if the corrosion and oxidation is happening so we need to replace the uh, the thermocouple with the new thermocouple so same replacement has to be done so by replacing like this uh, that that will be addition for the measurement so everybody will prefer once uh, um, once we are bringing some washing machine or we are bringing some refrigerator to our home we will prefer to have the same uh, refrigerator and washing machine for the long period of time otherwise if they are working for two months three months and once again we have to change that uh, refrigerator or washing machine means nobody will purchase that one why because that will increase the cost of that uh, particular instrument cost of our household operation similarly in the industrial use also once we fix some instrument there means it should work for the long period of time at least whatever they are preferring at least until the attrition of that equipment we have to prefer that one otherwise there is no use of that equipment because they will add a cost of that particular purpose okay purpose of the instrument is there to measure the temperature in case of thermocouple so if the temperature measurement is for a long period of time that is advantages if the temperature measurement is not for a long period of time it is getting damaged and it needs to be frequently replaced so that type of thermocouples are not at all acceptable for the industrial applications so together with this corrosion and uh, oxidation so thermocouples are usually made to operate with standard instruments with the calibration charts and the scales so because of this interchangeability so calibration chart and also with this uh, standard instrument so thermocouple can be reliable can be a reliable and interchangeable source of a source which can be used very widely in the industrial operations and also the last point it should be uh, producing a linear relationship of emf to temperature so here the purpose of measurement is temperature but how we are measuring that one by just generating the thermal emf that thermal emf is taking to measure the temperature of that particular medium uh, which is there at the measuring junction so it is desirable to have a linear relationship between a uh, emf and also the temperature so not only because the scale is more easily read but also because the problems of reference junction compensation are greatly reduced why they are greatly reduced means if if there there is no really relationship between emf which is generated here and traveling to the uh, measuring junction uh, traveling to the reference junction so if there is no good relationship between them temperature and the emf generated then there will be um, no good compensation is required there okay compensation usually we have to compensate for that one if there is no linear relationship if uh, for example the emf value of the your 10 millivolts is equal to the uh, is nearly proportional directly proportional to the temperature value of 10 degrees centigrade for example okay 10 degrees centigrade but instead of showing the 10 degrees centigrade it will be showing some other value okay then they needs they need some compensation they need some correction internal or external correction we have to apply that one so that type of thermocouples are not preferred so because of that reason we need to have a linear relationship of emf to temperature in our every thermocouple so commonly the definition of thermocouple is a thermocouples are made commonly in the form of wires insulated and welded together at the measuring junction so the measuring junction is formed in two different ways 
so how the measuring junctions will be formed measuring junction or this connecting terminals how they will be formed okay they will be formed usually using the two types of weldings so one is called as a twisted welding and next one is called as a butt welding so the twisted welding is made just by joining the two wires for and rotating them with a several turns okay like this so they will be rotated with a several turns like this so that is a twisted weld so the shape of uh, shape of the junction after the welding remains almost more or less same okay the shape will not change shape will not change much longer so that twisted weld is made with wires of larger size and also gives a good mechanical strength so because of this advantage good mechanical strength and also it can be used with a large wires so just we have to make them uh, joint and we have to twist them so that's the reason behind largely used this twisted welding so the shape of any junction after welding after welding using the twisted welding it will be more or less very much unchanged so the twisted weld is made of wires of large length or a large sizes and also it will gives a good mechanical strength so that's the advantage of twisted welding and the next is the butt welding so the butt butt welding is usually preferred for the small sizes of wires so the butt weld is made by fusing two wires into a round bead into a round bead so this method is used for very small size wires so just it will be welded there like a small bead bead like structures we have to weld like that but if you see the shape is completely different here the shape is completely different here the shape is completely different but here somewhat like a punch twist will be there here okay usually the shape or uh, size may be usually the same here but here different the size is more or less different here so that's the uh, butt welding as well as this uh, uh, as well as this particular twisted welding so next is this is the thermocouple which is another type of industrial thermocouple which is called as a tube type thermocouple so the thermo tube type thermocouples are usually made of iron constant and so one wire will be thermocouple the formation of thermocouples will be using two different uh, two dissimilar wires so one dissimilar wire is this one iron the next dissimilar wire is this constant end so usually this uh, tube type of thermocouples are made of iron constant end with the iron in the form of a tube and the constant end wire running down the center of the tube so the constant end wire will be in the center of the tube and iron wire will be on the corners of the tube in the form of a uh, in the form of a tube so here the construction of this type of uh, industrial thermocouple is to get a speed of response okay so get a much high speed of response by avoiding the use of thermal weld so we need not to use some other other than thermal weld so here if you see this is the thermocouple bulb for example if you say so this has to be inserted into some thermal weld so thermal welds will be looking like this so it has to be inserted into this type of thermal welds so as to be protected they has to be protected from high temperatures or corrosion environments but in the uh, tube type of setup this type of setup they themselves will acts as a uh, they themselves will acts as a uh, protector okay we need not to use the thermal weld so this type of construction this type of constructions are very very much preferable for the purpose of the construction uh, to improve the speed of response and by avoiding the use of thermal weld if thermal weld is there for example the primary shield you have applied here okay the temperature outside it has to reach first to the thermal weld and the temperature has to once again conduct inside the thermocouple so in, it will increase the lag or the temperature uh, going from top to bottom will be taking a much time okay that that will be taking a much time that's why to avoid that particular uh, delay in the response so we have to uh, we can use this type of iron constant and thermocouple in the tube type of structure so iron tube is generally th this iron tube will generally of something like uh, uh, 1/8 inch so 1/8 inch iron uh, outside diameter it will be there okay then usually a thin wire of constant end will be fixed in uh, fixed in between uh, middle of this tube and to in order to prevent them by forming the second junction so we have to use some insulating material so this insulating material can be asbestos like a cotton uh, uh, cotton like of things we can use okay uh, ceramic type of uh, setups we can use in between them so so in order to avoid a connection between close contact between them and also to prevent them for the, from the formation of any different junctions okay 
different junction only we want a measuring junction and a reference junction apart from that one we don't want any other junction to be formed so in order to not to form that type of junction we need to avoid a close contact between two dissimilar wires so to do that one we will be fixing some insulating material like asbestos cotton lentils and this uh, uh, ceramic type of uh, setups we can be used for insulating so in order to prevent the forming of second junction the wires of the thermocouples are insulated from each other by being threaded through porcelain insulators so this is about the industrial thermocouple one type of simple industrial thermocouple and then next is the tube type of thermocouple which is used to uh, increase the speed of response by not to uh, use the thermal wells here i hope it is clear yes sir okay then next is the common uh, thermocouples and their useful ranges for example there are five different types of commonly used thermocouples are there so one is a copper constant and another one is a iron constant and so thermocouple has to be constructed with two different uh, dissimilar metals so one metal will be uh, for example this is copper so this will be the positive metal this constant and this will be the negative metal and in case of this iron constant and iron will be the positive metal and this constant and will be the negative metal and chromel will be the positive metal and alumel will be the negative metal then platinum will be the positive metal and platinum with 13% rhodium will be the negative metal and next platinum will be the positive metal and platinum with 10% rhodium will be the uh, negative metal like this we have to construct five different types of thermocouples and here if you see this one uh, this graph here there is a useful temperature ranges okay range of industrial thermocouple for example copper constant and 20 gauge so 20 gauge means it will be indicating you the thickness of the thermocouple wires okay the first type of thermocouple with a 20 gauge we can use this nearly minus 300 degree fahrenheit to 100 degree fahrenheit positive 100 degree fahrenheit we can use within this temperature range the first thermo thermocouple can be preferred and to use this iron constant and we can use from 0 degree fahrenheit to until 200 degree fahrenheit iron constant and 14 gauge then if you in, uh, if you increase the gauge uh, decrease the gauge number or increase the thickness in, uh, decreasing the gauge number means increasing the thickness of that particular wire okay if you increase the uh, decrease the gauge number so that is iron constant and 8 gauge then you can use this type of thermocouple from 0 degree fahrenheit to around 1600 degree fahrenheit we can use this one so you can extend the range you can just extend the range of this thermocouple and then next is a chromel alumel so if you see this one the chromel alumel 14 gauge 14 gauge thermocouple can be used from 600 degree fahrenheit to nearly um, 1800 degree fahrenheit we can use this one the next one chromel alumel if you increase if you decrease the gauge number or increase the thickness of that wire you can use this one from 600 degree fahrenheit to nearly 2100 degree fahrenheit and the last type of thermocouple is platinum platinum rhodium thermocouple this two thermocouples we can use this uh, thermocouples from 1300 degree fahrenheit to around 3000 degree fahrenheit also we can uh, use this is the useful range uh, this is the useful range of this thermocouple so here if you notice in this graph in the reducing atmosphere we can increase this uh, we can increase the uh, temperature range of the thermocouple especially in in this chromel alumel uh, this is this meshed this uh, uh, what we say this uh, uh, okay this lines okay this uh, lines are nothing but in oxidizing atmosphere this chromel alumel its temperature range can be increased so why such a temperature range can be increased especially in the iron constant and thermocouple they may be used in the temperature uh, several degree centigrade which are higher than their upper limit okay which are higher than their upper limit we can use for the several hundred uh, degree fahrenheit if there is no oxygen is present to attack the iron wire so oxygen is this iron wires are very much susceptible to the oxygen so if we can operate our thermocouples in the reducing environment so there will be no presence of oxygen if there is no presence of oxygen the damage to this iron metal will be very very less then this thermocouple can be used for uh, at high temperatures also so therefore we can extend from 11 uh, 1200 degree fahrenheit to around 1600 degree fahrenheit the iron the iron constant and thermocouple usage range can be expanded and next in the case of chromel alumel thermocouples 
so uh, they may be employed at higher temperature so which may be indicated for this one nearly 1700 degree fahrenheit to 15 16 70 1800 degree fahrenheit to around 2100 degree fahrenheit if there is a presence of oxygen okay here to operate this at high temperature chromium aluminum thermocouples we need to have a oxidizing environment or presence of oxygen is required if you want to operate iron constant and thermocouple at higher temperatures than indicated here we need to have a reducing environment so it needs to be uh, suppressed with a oxygen because iron wires are susceptible to the oxygen so that's the difference between this iron constant and with this different gauges okay is that clear yes sir okay so next topic is this thermocouple lead wires okay for example if you notice this one the first type of this thermocouple which is iron constant and iron is a positive metal and constant and is the negative metal so here by twisting or welding this one we are forming a measuring junction but in order to construct a thermocouple we need to have a reference junction also so somewhere far away nearly 100 feet more than 100 feet also we can keep that uh, uh, reference junction far away to keep that at a more than 100 feet what we have to do this reference junction we have to connect this iron constant and thermocouple with some suitable wires okay that suitable wires which are connecting the measuring junction thermocouple measuring junction with the reference junction is called as a lead wires okay this lead wires so how this lead wires will be formed and what is the compatibility of this lead wires with the construction material of the thermocouple itself is one type of uh, another problem here uh, that we we have to discuss here so thermocouple measuring junction is usually located some distance from the instrument with which it is used sometimes several hundred feet okay several hundred feet the distance will be there between t and this tr since the thermocouple is connected to the instrument uh, by wires we have two problems so one problem is where to locate this reference junction that is the location of a reference junction and next one is the errors is induced due to the connecting wires this lead wires so if they are not compatible with the thermocouple construction material so their polarity will be very different if their polarity is different a strong errors a very uh, good errors will be there so due to this errors the entire thermocouple cannot be used for a long uh, cannot be used cannot be initiated for use also so therefore it is necessary to to use a connecting wire that will avoid errors so what type of wires are compatible with the what type of construction material of thermocouple we will be seeing in the chart or a table so that table is for example the copper the positive metal the thermocouple construction material is positive metal is copper and negative metal is constant and to extend this copper we can use copper itself as a lead wire and to extend this constant and we can use constant and itself as a lead wire then in the case of iron uh, and constant and thermocouple we can use iron itself to extend this iron metal and we can use this constant and to extend itself a constant and as a lead wire then in the chromium aluminum thermocouple also we can use chromium to extend this chromium uh, in the construction material of thermocouple and aluminum can be used as a lead wire to extend the thermocouple but what happens see uh, copper okay compared to the iron copper will be somewhat costlier so costly we cannot use to uh, uh, much uh, very much high lens we cannot use the costly items we have to go for the less costly items so that is the case so there are two methods to selecting the lead wires so one is the thermocouple wire themselves may be extended to the instrument that first three cases are that one only the thermocouple wire itself is extending okay in uh, as a lead wires there and next is the lead wires may be made of thermocouple metals having the same thermoelectric properties as the thermocouple with which they are used means the compatibly similar thermoelectric properties having lead wires can also be used for example in the fourth uh, Uh, row we are showing this one chromium aluminum in the case of chromium aluminum thermocouple we cannot extend this chromium chromium is also costly so because of this reason we can go for the iron okay chromium is compatible with this iron almost a similar thermoelectric properties can be encountered so to extend this chromium positive metal a positive lead wire which is called as a iron can be used and to extend this aluminum uh, uh, negative metal in the thermocouple so we can use the copper nickel alloy to extend this one so this is also compatible with aluminum then in case of similar 
plat uh, this uh, chromel alumel thermocouple we can also use the copper to extend this chromel wire and we can use alumel uh, we can use constantin to extend the alumel wire also so this is also compatible these two metals are also compatible to extend with them and the last case is platinum rhodium and platinum thermocouple so platinum rhodium is the positive and platinum is the negative and uh, for example platinum is costly compared to the other metals plat platinum is highly costly okay, nearly equal to the gold rates or something like that so platinum is costly if you use the platinum to extend this wire further that will be uh, extending the cost or enlarging the cost of operation as well as the construction cost will be very high platinum we cannot use to extend the wires so the compatible wires to extend this platinum rhodium is copper we can use and to this platinum a copper nickel alloy can also be used so there are the requirements uh, to use the compatible lead wire so that the cost of construction and the operation will be very low so in the case of in the first particularly in the last case it it should be evident that due to the construction cost of this platinum we cannot use platinum to extend the thermocouple for the uh, 100 feet more than 100 feet of your length of the length difference between reference junction and measuring junction so therefore we need to use the compatible wires compatible wires in between uh, this uh, measuring thermocouple measuring junction and the uh, thermocouple reference junction so then during installation it is important to observe the polarity of lead wires and the thermocouples otherwise a large error may be results so during installation we need to verify the uh, thermocouple uh, polarity construction material polarity as well as lead wire polarity if they are deviating very largely means the errors will be very very high okay the is that clear yes sir yes sir okay then the last one this one the thermal wells so usually this thermocouple lead wires uh, uh, during the industrial operation they will be subjected to very much rugged use as well as very abusive use so they have to withstand for the abusive usage as well as for the long period of time continuous uh, measurement of temperature they have to perform so during their performance if the environment is not good okay if the environment is some corrosive environment or sudden shock sudden temperature high low fluctuations are there then this uh, thermometer construction material will be spoiled out due to corrosion as well as sudden shocks in the variation of temperature so in order to not to have that type of uh, uh, problems we need to keep this entire thermocouple setup in the thermal wells so that is nothing but a protective means to uh, provide a protective means for the particular thermocouple so first type, first is this one thermocouple during installation we have to insert that thermocouple into some protective sheet protective metal sheet therefore if some corrosion environment is there the outer thermal well can be damaged but inside the thermocouple cannot be damaged so then they will be connecting with the wires like this and similarly the open end thermal well this is another type of open end thermal well in which Uh, the thermocouple will be present uh, inside like this and the assembly in this assembly the wires for the connecting reference junction to the measuring junction will be given like this and next one is primary and secondary so secondary thermal well so first primary thermal well will be there inside that one there will be some secondary thermal well so this will decrease the speed of response but the protection provided will be very very high uh, due to two different types of thermal wells are there inside one single thermocouple so the thermal wells are used to protect the thermocouples from corrosive or oxidizing action and from very high temperatures so thermocouples are protected by means of thermal well or a protecting tube so this will act as a protecting means for the thermocouple installation is that clear yes sir okay so this is the completion of your unit 1 so so far if you have any doubts in this one you can ask me no sir no doubts yes sir okay uh, i am just going to revise the quickly revise this uh, point by point once again uh, unit 1 so first is unit 1 is about qualities of measurement how to measure uh, how what are the qualities based on which the measurements can be performed and also various thermo couple uh, thermo couples thermometers we are discussing this unit 1 so the contents are the meaning of instrument uh, then static and dynamic characteristics expansion thermometer solid expansion liquid expansion gas or vapor expansion then what is the use of thermoelectric uh, temperature measurement thermocouples 
lead wires and then material of construction applications of various thermometers we have seen in the as a contents in this particular unit then part 1 we have divided this content entire content into three different parts so that easily you can understand that one so first part will be the meaning of instrument meaning of measurement elements and functions of instrument along with the static and dynamic characteristics of the instrument this as a first part and next part will be thermo uh, expansion thermometers solid expansion liquid expansion vapor and uh, gas expansion thermometers then the third part we are divided into thermoelectric temperature measurement as well as thermocouples this entire part we have taken as a third part for the convenience of understanding so the first part is the measurement so measurement is nothing but a fundamental action so using which we can determine any quantity or quality of the product so to determine that one we need to be having certain instrument for that one so determining any measurement we need to have certain instrument for that one so what are the examples of measurement it can be qualitative it can be quantitative then there are two types of measurement where the purpose of measurement and also the purpose of processing is same that is called as a direct measurement and where the purpose of processing and purpose of measurement are completely different they are called as a indirect measurement then instrument so to measure to perform any measuring operation we need a suitable uh, device so that device is called as a instrument then functions of an instrument is five different types of functions will be performed by any instrument one is a transmitting uh, function then signaling function registering function indicating function and recording function then there are elements of an instrument then four types of elements will be there usually the primary element which will be in direct touch with the uh, medium then secondary element which will operate on the command of this primary element then the manipulating element they will be adjusting the uh, characters okay adjusting the characters by taking a command from the secondary element then finally the manipulate after adjustment with the manipulating element there is a final element which is called as a functioning element using this functioning element only we could able to uh, read that particular measurement whether it's the quality or quantity we can read from the functioning element itself so this is the example we have given for the elements of instrument then there are characteristics of an instrument so this characteristics are divided into two types one is a static and dynamic characteristics static or at which which are independent of time and dynamic or at which they are dependent on time so depending on time they will be varying but independent of time they are not static and uh, static characteristics are independent of time so further static and dynamic characteristics are divided into two subsets one is a desirable subset and another one is a undesirable subset so they will be both there in the static as well as dynamic so desirable characteristics of a static uh, desirable static characteristics are accuracy reproducibility and sensitivity then undesirable characteristics or static characteristics of a, of an instrument is static error dead zone and drift so there are three forms of drift one is a zero drift then span drift and position drift and further this dynamic characteristics are divided into two different subset one is a desirable characteristics and undesirable dynamic characteristics so in the desirable dynamic characteristics speed of response and fidelity are there and undesirable dynamic characteristics there is a lag and dynamic error is there so these are in detail we have discussed what is the each characteristics and everything then coming to the part 2 the expansion thermometers bimetallic mercury in glass thermometer and pressure spring thermometer we are uh, see, we have seen that one so before that one what is the importance to measure the temperature without any proper units okay nothing can be determined so until unless we are reporting the uh, uh, particular quantity with some units only it is having a meaning okay so if you say 32 32 uh, or uh, 2 2 212 so until unless you are uh, you are specifying this is a fahrenheit or degree centigrade it doesn't have any meaning that uh, number that doesn't have any meaning until unless you are just giving some units for that one so to give that units so what is their operating ranges and everything we have a five different temperature scales popularly they are employed in the every industry depending on the industry types okay the first one is the fahrenheit scale then centigrade scale then kelvin scale and rankine scale and raymond scale so according to the different different scale we have a ice point absolute zero and the steam point so different different scales will have a different ice point steam point and absolute zero according to this particular chart then next is the mercury in glass thermometer in the mercury in glass thermometer as you can notice from this figure so the principle behind this operation is a cubical expansion of the liquid or 
cubical expansion of a mercury in case of mercury if you are using some other liquid here like alcohol ethyl alcohol uh, pentane toluene and hydrocarbon compounds so that's why the principle is cubical expansion of the liquid so while its expansion we can use to we can be able to read the temperature depending on the scale which is fitted here we can use the degree fahrenheit or degree scale centigrade or degree rayam or degree rank and degree kelvin so depending on the construction and the calibration scale which is fitted onto the uh, onto this particular thermometer so usually they will be constructed there will be some primary element which is called as a bulb and there will be some uh, um, this bulb will be fitted into some thermal well if required if it is it cannot be damaged and this bulb will be connected with some uh, uh, free space onto which a calibrated scale will be fitted okay whenever there is some heat change uh, uh, in the surrounding so bulb will be sensing that heat change due to the conduction and due to the conduction once again this bulb uh, will transforming heat uh, to the liquid which is there inside that one and due to the increase in the temperature of that particular liquid so it will be expanding the cubical expansion will takes place like this while they are expanding we can able to read the temperature which is there at the medium using the calibrated scale which is fitted onto the therm uh, thermometer then they are popularly used for open tank uh, tanks containing liquids and cooking kettles molten metal bath and steam lines pipelines for flow uh, fluid flow and air ducts so other types of fluids as shown here can also be used for the mercury in place of mercury as a medium of uh, uh, construction the next one is solid expansion thermometer so that is called as a bimetallic thermometer in which there are uh, two different types of uh, expansion coefficients so whose metals are having different expansion coefficients will be used here for example when two different types of strips metal strips are welded together or twisted together okay the metal which is having a low expansion metal will be expanded depending on the temperature which is there at this particular strip and the high expansion thermometer uh, high expansion metal will be remaining as such so this can be constructed as the uh, uh, wire type of setup or stripping side type of setup of the wound type of setup so we can wind that one like this or we can just simply construct in a strip type of setup so whenever there is a change in the outside temperature here at the at the two metallic strips so there will be some rotation of this particular fixed end so due to this rotation in the fixed end or deflection in the fixed end so it will be uh, causing some displacement in the pointer here so this pointer will be rotated on to the circular dial so due to this we can able to read the reading which is uh, for the outside temperature here so the range is almost minus 40 degree fahrenheit to 800 degree fahrenheit we can use this type of strips and accuracy is plus or minus 1 percentage of the instrument span then principle behind this operation is coefficient of thermal expansion of a metal if the low expansion metal is fixed so that will be expanded and high metal high expansion metal will be retained like that so the difference in the expansivity of the metals will be used as a principle to determine the temperature then similarly the mercury in glass thermometer almost same uses are there for this type of thermometers also uh, then metals okay what are the construction metal uh, for a low expansion metal we can use invar invar is nothing but an iron nickel alloy in which nickel percentage is nearly 36 degree uh, 36 uh, percentage then for the construction of this high expansion metal we can choose brass for the low temperature ranges and we can choose nickel alloys for the high temperature ranges so these are the construction metals then pressure swing thermometer so this is a vapor expansion of the gas expansion thermometer in which the pressure or vapor pressure of the gas is proportional to the temperature is the principle for the operation so bulb will be there as such it will be filled with some Uh, liquid or uh, it will be filled with some gas or something like expansive expansive liquid or vaporizing liquid so whenever there is a deviation in the outside temperature here that deviation in temperature will be sensed by the inside medium and this will be expanded and it will exert some vapor pressure or pressure so this pressure will be carried forward by this capillary and armor or a long capillary and armor and this capillary and armor will cause some deflection or displacement of Uh, displacement of this pressure receiver so here the pressure receiver is nothing but pressure spring or a bored down tube we can call so due to the deflection uh, deflection of this pressure spring it will cause some displacement in the pressure spring so this displacement in the pressure spring is which is connected to the pointer will displace from its standard position then uh, this pointer which will be located on the calibrated scale will show you the reading of what is the reading of the temperature at this particular location 
so this pressure receivers can be of three types one is a bored on tube type and spiral type or helix type out of this anything we can use here as a pressure receiver so after this pressure receiver there will be a connector which will be connecting the pressure receiver to the pen arm or a pointer we can say so due to this connection whenever it is deflecting from its standard position so this will cause a displacement in the pointer so this pointer will be rotated on a calibrated chart so due to this one we can able to read the reading which is there at the uh, in the calibrated chart so this uh, bulb thermo thermometer bulb so this bulbs will be usually uh, fitted in some thermal wells okay so as to prevent the damage to that particular bulb so this is called as a thermal wells okay this uh, capillary bulbs this uh, bulbs can also be constructed not only the simple type of this type of bulb we can also construct in the capillary bulb format also this wound type of bulb formats also and usually the capillary in armor can also be taking this following shapes okay this they can be present in the following shapes also then in order to uh, whenever there is a capillary in armor which is very long okay which is connecting this uh, sensing element as well as this particular pressure receiver so in order to lower this lag okay lag of transforming the information from primary element to the re pressure receiving or the uh, secondary uh, uh, secondary element or a functioning element so we have to suppress the long capillary and armor to suppress that one we will be constructing with some other new, uh, other balance which is called as a pneumatic balance pressure uh, pressure thermometer so in this one so long capillary and armor can be replaced by a simple copper tubing okay this is a capillary which is simple copper tubing in between the pressure receive uh, pressure transmitter or receiver and then a bulb which is a primary element so the short length of capillary between bulb and transmitter can be just uh, uh, replaced with a simple copper tubing ordinary copper tubing and no ambient temperature compensation is required since very uh, small lag is there in between this pressure receiver or a transmitter and the primary element then increase the speed of response due to the short length of a capillary in between this two then decrease dead zones so whenever there is a expansion of this particular uh, medium which is there in the bulb so that will be carried forward by this capillary to the bellows gauge so this bellows will be expanded like our lungs whenever we are inhaling inhaling oxygen or inhaling air so that will be expanded lungs will be expanded similarly whenever the pressure is pushing this one this will be expanded whenever this is expanding it will be uh, opening this control valve so a counterbalancing uh, same whatever the pressure which is there inside to counterbalance this bellows there will be the operation of this control nozzle that will allow you to flow 20 psi gauge air supply so whatever the uh, excess uh, excess uh, uh, air supply is there that will be uh, sent out uh, using the bleed nozzle then the particular excess air apart from this bellows after balancing that one it will be going to the pressure receiver in which it will be deflecting this pointer like this so uh, this pointer will be operated on a circular chart or circular calibrated scale then you can easily read what is the pressure or if the calibrated scale is in terms of temperature you can read the temperature also so there this this also have a certain disadvantages that is high maintenance and service required so this is bellows usually they will be spoiled out okay maybe metallic bellows or something with rubber type of or neoprene type of things but they will be spoiled due to this frequent replacements are required that's why high maintenance and service is required and barometric pressures are not negligible at low pressures at low pressure the atmospheric uh, uh, pressures will have a somewhat uh, uh, somewhat effect on the measurements why because if the pressure is very low then the, then the inside external and inside pressure will not have a proper balance in between them due to this imbalance the expansion of this bellows will be high or low depending on the particular error induced then there are common sources of errors in the fillet system thermometer one is the ambient effect so in the ambient temperature effect more accurately we can call this as a ambient temperature effect depending on the outside temperature the bulb can be showing you uh, a different variable temperature apart from the what is the true temperature so that is called as ambient temperature effect the next one is uh, depending on the location of your bulb whether you are locating this bulb at a higher elevation or the lower elevation so due to the error induced due to this elevation is called as a head and elevation effect the next one is barometric effect due to the difference in the atmospheric pressure at the bulb location so the, the difference induced is called as this barometric effect or atmospheric uh, induced effect we can call then immersion effect 
so this immersion effect is caused due to the improper immersion of the bulb inside the medium temperature measuring medium then the diff effect diff effect is caused due to the expansion of the bulb first uh, rather than expanding the inside filled mercury mercury uh, mercury or some other uh, fluid which is there inside the bulb so due to this the error induced due to the expansion of the bulb is nothing but expansion of bulb will uh, expand the volume of that one and decrease the pressure inside that one if the pressure is decreased so that will cause a, uh, a non uniform deflection in this particular pressure spring or the pressure receiver then it will corresponding an error reading will be shown here so that's the various five different types of common errors then characteristics of the thermometer like mercury uh, mercury thermometer gas and vapor thermometer this is the common uh, uh, operating ranges temperature limit is minus 35 to 1000 and for the gas it is minus 200 to 800 degree fahrenheit and for the vapor that is minus 50 degree fahrenheit to 600 degree fahrenheit then the ambient effect is it will have a ambient temperature effect mercury and then gas and vapors there will be no ambient temperature effect then the head effect will be there for the all the three cases then barometric effect will not be there in the mercury and little effect will be there uh, by the bar barometric effect in the gas and there will be high effect in the vapor vapor uh, vapor case and dip effect will be high in the mercury and there is no dip effect in the gas and vapor then immersion effect will be there in the uh, mercury and uh, mercury and gas uh, gas thermometers and immersion effect will be very less in the vapor the speed of response will be almost same for the mercury and gas and the greater speed of response will be there for the vapor and sensitivity will be very much high or greater in the mercury uh, thermometer and almost a similar sensitivity will be there for the gas and vapor so this chart shows the factor then part 3 will be the thermoelectric effect and the industrial thermocouples their lead wires and their construction materials so thermoelectricity so thermocouple is usually composed of a two dissimilar metals they will be joined together at the both ends so one end is called as a measuring junction usually that measuring junction will be the high temperature it will be in touch with the medium which uh, whose temperature has to be measured and another junction is called as a reference junction which will be located at a far away place compared to the uh, measuring junction so the difference in the temperature in between these two will be generating some emf electromotive force thermal emf will call so this thermal emf is generated due to the absorption of the heat from the medium at the measuring junction after absorption this absorbed heat has to be evolved to the uh, another location which is at lower temperature so heat will travel from higher temperature region to lower temperature during this travel the emf will be traveling and also the current will be traveling from the measuring junction to reference junction how this emf is traveling what is the relationship between temperature absorption and emf traveling and relationship between the thermal emf and temper uh, thermal emf and current flow will be given by the three effects which is called as a seebeck effect so how the uh, in the thermoelectric circuit of two dissimilar wires how the thermal emf is generated that is given by the seebeck effect and how the thermal emf related to current that is given by the peltier effect so emf is directly proportional to the current and one uh, uh, law, one effect which is not at all used in the thermocouple but uh, worthy to remember this one so emf is directly proportional to the product of i square current square into resistance the next useful thermal uh, thomson effect is here the thermal emf whatever the thomson emf it is generated it is only the function of temperature difference between measuring junction and reference junction which is said by the thomson effect so this three effects are very very much useful the next one is to connect this uh, measuring junction with a reference junction there are many intermediate temperatures will be there there are many intermediate metals will be there so to define that one to connect that one properly there are three different laws so one is a law of homogeneous circuit in which the electric current cannot be sustained in a, in a circuit of a single homogeneous metal however varying the section by application of heat alone so this law allows you to connect uh, okay to connect uh, the various metal wires okay various different metal wires in between them okay the distribution so how the temperature will be distributed between the uh, connecting wires and law of intermediate metals so this law says that emf value generated the net emf generated after uh, uh, performing a sum of all the emf it should be zero if there is a net positive emf then heating will takes place and irregular temperature will be there so that's that is said by this law of intermediate metals then law of intermediate temperatures so if the if the location of the thermometer is at t1 and t2 and another thermo same thermometers are located at t1 and t3 
so t1 the whatever the uh, temperature uh, emf generated in first case t1 and t2 is same as the uh, second case the sum of the t1 and t2 plus t2 and t3 emfs so that is called as the sum of the emfs of one location is equal to the total emf it is telling so when you combine all these three laws we could able to properly operate and construct the thermocouple with uh, extending the uh, thermocouple with the lead wires proper lead wires in between the uh, measuring junction and reference junction then industrial thermocouples today we have covered this topic so there are certain desirable properties are also there and all this one today we are we already covered this one i am not going to cover once again okay i hope it is clear to everybody unit 1 since unit 1 is completed the notebook you have already so everything you have just try to uh, read beforehand okay not keep until the examination comes or weekly mid something comes okay better to read everything okay then thank you for listening thank you, you my leader thank you